Welcome to the 4A Music Podcast. I'm Charlie. I'm Alexandria. I'm Amy. On this week's pod, responding to the call of art, revamping David Geffen Hall, the exciting and terrifying possibilities of AI created music, new music, and more. First off, what's new? What's on your mind, Charlie? Well, thanks for asking, Alexandria. Um, so this week I've been thinking a lot about uh, unreliable narrators, or another, uh, specifically in this way that like we're we're not um, we're bad judges of like how we sound. Uh, I, I feel like I've said this to students like multiple, multiple times this week that like oh yeah, that doesn't sound like how you think it sounds. Or like, no, that sounds really loud, actually. And they're like, no, but it's really quiet. And I'm like, no, it sounds just as loud as the <laughs> thing you were doing. It's pretty loud. Um, so I, I've, I've like written reports about this or done like presentations about this, but like especially when we're singing, like the bones in our body, in our head, and like like our skull, mostly our skull, and, and like a bunch of other factors like, make us totally unreliable when it comes to like, especially knowing like how loud we're singing or, um, or like the tone of our voice, all that kind of stuff, or, or like the, um, kind of general timbre. Like we hear our voices as being much lower than they are, mm. uh, because our bones vibrate at the lower frequencies and it kind of amplifies it. So I've just had like multiple times, like, especially, so I have students that like really want to belt, like they really want to sing like a song and they want to sing like really loud because it sounds really loud on the recording. And that's like a whole other different kind of thing. But I'll be like, well, what happens if you just sing that in your head voice? And they'll go like, Doo! and I'm like, that was pretty loud. And they're like, <laughs> what? And I was like, yeah, it's, it's like, it's like 90%, 80% as loud as when you're trying to belt and there's not like a vein popping out in your neck. <laughs> uh, which is an added plus. <laughs> Um, but I've just been, so I, that's kind of made me think about like this kind of like, um, unreliable narrator thing where like, we're kind of narrating our little story. That's just one example. But, um, have, have either of you experienced that? Most people do like the first time they hear a recording of themselves or like, <laughs> do we every week I listen back to the podcast. <laughs> I have two things that come immediately to mind and it's not even the podcast. So my brother will always well, not much anymore, but I used to like sing with unabashed um, confidence around the house and my brother would be like, it's just like, it's just like really loud though. <laughs> and then um, I think the other one is just stories like that, listening yeah, to yeah. myself and being like, ooh. <laughs> Maybe, oh yeah, whenever you like, oh yeah, I remember I had to do this rap. Um, my teacher had me rapping it was terrifying y'all you know, this summer i had to do a rap anyways i would like can record... we listen can we stream it anyway okay anyways <laughs> everything i need to know <laughs> the alexandria soundcloud <laughs> yeah, mixtape anyways i had to record myself because i know i sound like a white boy from jersey when i rap like <laughs> extremely white boy from jersey <laughs> and so i recorded myself and i was like oh <laughs> and so i would Ma, 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 ma. <laughs> I like lowered my voice so much because I sounded like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and so, ma, 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 ma. <laughs> but we we don't even know what we sound like when we listen back, do we? Or do we? I think that I think that that's pretty fair. Yeah, I think like when we listen back, I think that that's that's much more accurate how it sounds to everybody else. <laughs> Yikes! I don't like it. I always yeah, there's not a I third... listen to myself talk. Yeah. I'm like, why are people friends? <laughs> Same. <laughs> what were you going to say? Sorry, I literally cut you off. So no, no, that's true though. I feel the same way. It's um. So I have my students record their lessons, and like sometimes they'll like play a little bit back to me, like back. I'm like, oh, let's listen to that, and it's me talking. I'm like, hey, so here's the deal. You're gonna do this thing, and I'm like, oh. you sound nothing like, like, like gonna, that too, though. I need to kill myself. I got. Like, I'm, I'm gonna jump out the window. That's like. Um, if that's what the Excuse vibe is. Me. But what I was going to say is like, yeah, there's no third thing. There's like how you sounds in your head. 
and then that's how it sounds out in the world. There's no like other. There's no third. There's option. no medium. <laughs> Damn. No. no. I was yeah. hoping you there was a medium. Listening to yourself through an iPhone speaker or not at all. <laughs> Yeah, it's through the iPhone speaker and not at all. That's the... <laughs> oh, my God. Um, no, I mean, obviously, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of different things that can affect how your, record and your recording is and all that kind of stuff. But, like, if you have a nice microphone, if you're listening on nice headphones or, like, in a nice speaker or something, it's like that's pretty much how you sound. Um, okay. And that's cool. I'm more you know. uncomfortable with my talking voice than I am with my singing voice mm -hmm. now. Used to be I hated it both. I would, like, plug my ears. Now it's, like... I just don't like listening to myself speak. I think it's still for me neither. Mm. Learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, some movie stars will like be like, oh, I never watch my movies, you know? Or like actors or something will just be like, yeah. oh, yeah, I never watch my movies back. And Oh, wow. I don't know. I think like some of that. I, I've heard, um, I think one of the famous ones, like Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow, like hates her speaking voice. And so she's like, yeah, I never watch any of my movies. Like it just like, it really bugs me to hear myself talk. That's crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Dang. Um anyways, uh what's what's new for you, Alexandria? Uh I went to um a friendly jam session um on Sunday. And it was like super uber friendly. Like the the leader of it's called Mimi. Her name is Mimi Jones and she's like a great bass player. And my friend was playing drums and I was like, Oh, I'm just gonna go. Like whatever happens, happens. It usually takes a lot for me to put say like, oh, I'm going to stand up and jam with people because usually it's a bunch of men that I don't really want to like be compared to or like they just assume the worst for me because I get up and I'm like a singer or whatever. But that was like not the vibe oh. here. And I love that. And she's like, yeah, we call this the lab session because we're in here. We're like trying to figure it out. If you fall, we'll pick you up like. Wow. This is like the vibe here is just to like work out whatever you've been, you know, thinking about or practicing. And I don't know. I just really dug the vibes. And you don't see that a lot in like the jazz um, atmosphere because everyone's like, oh my gosh, bro, look at me. You know? <laughs> and <I don't> know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 it's that all about it right there. Yeah. It's all about look at me, look at me instead of like being supportive of each other and. Um, just like really listening and having a good time and having like just like a good experience at a jam session. I loved it. I was very happy and it was small and, you know, and, and the owner of the club was very nice. He's like, oh, Alex, please come again. I'm like, yeah, you got it, dude. Yay. And like the people who work there, they're so nice. Like one of the bartenders was a rapper and they encouraged him. They're like, oh, bro, you should come up and rap. And he's like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, bro, come up. <laughs> and he rapped and he was like, it was such a safe space. Like he like rapped for, I think like 16 bars. He's like, I have nothing else. And they're like, that's great. Wow. I love you that. Know? I liked it. But he had a low, he had a low voice when he was rapping or did he sound yeah, like he had, from Jersey? He, like, he, did. <laughs> 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 he did not sound like he was from Jersey. He was from Philly. So he had like that Philly swang. Is that a word? Swang, T twang, twang. That's the word. I Philly like twang. Swang, swang um, twang. Yeah. But <laughs> I liked it very much. Mimi made it such like a comfortable environment for everyone to just be like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna get up and do this and have fun." I appreciated that a lot. Is it a weekly thing? Like, is it a regular thing? Yeah, or... it's every Sunday. Okay. She does it every wow. Sunday. And yeah. what club is it? We let's like uh, let's get the word out. Oh yeah, it's um, Club Room Six Twenty Three. It's in Harlem. It's on West One Nineteenth Street. It's in like it has great sound because it's in a basement. Oh my yeah. god! And low ceilings, and it's per it's great. And the drinks are nice, and the like the I don't even what are they called like servers? They're very nice too. And everyone is just nice. I don't know. I like the vibes. <laughs> it's shocking. It's just a fifteen dollar kind of cover charge, fifteen dollar cover charge. But that's not bad, though. It's not bad. You get a show, and then you get like jam, and it was like eight to ten forty five, ten eight to eleven ish. You can stay for both sets. You don't have to pay twice. Dang! I think the last like legitimately cool like jam session I was at was I was like an undergrad and it was like there was like a weekly thing at the coffee shop and like that was and it was in Wisconsin <laughs> it's just like 
you know, just students or whatever. But that was the last time I felt like, oh, this jam, like this jam session was cool. After that, it like uh, all the ones I went to in New York were were fine. I, I like, but it's much more what you're describing. Just rough, yeah, kind of like, rough vibes. Like the, I didn't want to do it. I just want to repeat Alex doing it. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like testosterone jazz. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what that is about. I like has has anyone gotten a gig from like a jam session in the last like sixty years? <laughs> ah! You know, like I don't know what you're. What are you there to prove? Yeah, um, I don't even. It's I guess it's to you know. I don't know, Charlie. I see to these each other to each other, even to like them. Uh, I don't know. I I have this thing. So I went to Smalls, and these girls when? were dressing. Recently? Yeah, like in. Oh, I know. These okay. girls were dressing like they were going to the club, which you know, like the club club, like they're in Miami going to the club, but they're going to s Smalls. <laughs> <laughs> and I think these, I think some of the people are in there to impress these women too. They're yeah. just like, oh yeah, I need to show her that I can play my instrument. You know? This is not fair of me because I don't really want to get into this. So it's one of these like gotchas. You, you do a little drive by. <laughs> I was so upset this weekend though about this very thing. But as a, as me experiencing, like navigating how to be friends with people like that. Yeah. I'm not trying to throw everybody under the bus because like a lot of people I know are good people. I do feel like I, I know like people who are good humans whose like values and musical values align with mine. But just in terms of like the overarching like <laughs> feeling that you have existing in the world, it's like low key terrifying and I am scared to make friends. <laughs> it's hard, you know, yeah. it's like yeah. college. I like, oh, God. You know, at least then you get to like know them. <laughs> at least, at least then you're kind of like stuck together. So it's like they finally are like, oh yeah, you're also a human being. Sorry. Anyways, that's okay. I think the soundbite is you know because college is like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> There's just like so that's like that's like seven cans of worms. It's seven waiting for us to. <laughs> Anyways, room 623, yeah. friendly jam session, Mimi. Mimi Jones. Check it out. This is like a children's book, like the story of the friendly jam session. <laughs> <laughs> I was imagining like like stick figure people when you were like impersonating everyone. I was imagining stick figures just like animating around. Yeah, that could be our, <laughs> that's our first foray children's book. Yes. The story of the friendly jam session. I great. love it. Wait, I don't know. I think you're kidding, but I, but maybe we circle back to that. Yeah. On the later Let's circle date. back. Put it on the okay. big yeah. board. Put it up on yeah. the big board, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Amy, what's your, uh, what's, what were you thinking about this week? Besides okay, that big well, can of worms. I was thinking about, I know that was a big can of worms. Well, so what happened was whenever I have days off from this job I'm doing, my brain just goes la 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 and starts like, like, it going in hyperdrive about like everything in the world and one of them i guess i'm just gonna coin it and not that it's an original phrase but creativity overload where like the second day of my day off i'm like oh and i wanted to do this project and then also this other thing i was thinking about and this thing and like i make myself this huge list of creative things and it's impossible to do any of them in like a day like these are i'm talking these are like month-long projects that I forget about when I'm invested and like into the work or whatever. Yeah. Not that I don't have the evening, but like I'm just more tired than I thought <laughs> the past <laughs> month or so. Anyway, so I have these days off and then I'll be like, I'm all these things. So I'm just trying to figure out, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm finding that consistency is becoming important to me so that I can be like, if I think of something on this Tuesday, then I'm like, oh, but I have next Tuesday off. So I can do like, a third of it today and then i can work on it again in a week and that's not that far away because i've been having some just like i haven't gotten into my groove yet so sometimes i'm a little panicky about like getting to where you need to be yeah yeah yeah. just having the space to like to just stay even i just want to be like a little more even than i mm -hmm. currently am but i think that happens in other things too Sounds like, I don't know. 
I think it could happen in any setting, like in college too. I feel like that happened to me too, in a different way. I guess it's like real life stuff. You're like, oh, I've been doing school. Like, yeah, I need to like wash my clothes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> that, we're dying over here. That creates sim symmetry, balance. Maybe your hamper is not overflowing, and now it's like balanced, like it's just at the brim. And yeah, the rest of the clothes are being washed. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks Correct. for entertaining my. No, I think you're right. I think that I'm more tired than I thought is like that's going to be like the title of my autobiography or something. Like I'm more tired than I thought. <laughs> Literally. Um, <laughs> that's what you said. The um. Yeah, the another thing I saw today was like this idea that like we put off these like we put off the things we're working on or like one of the ways that we procrastinate is we imagine our future self is going to be like a much better version of ourselves than we are oh, today. You know, like we're gracious. like you know, like, oh, okay, I'm gonna do some of this. I'm gonna do a third of it on this Tuesday, but then next Tuesday I'm gonna do two thirds of it. And it's yeah. like why am I thinking next Tuesday I'm gonna somehow be able to do twice as much work as I did today? <laughs> But we do exactly. like we kind of do that stuff, and it's just, it piles mm -hmm. up a little bit. Yeah, um, I, I'm totally 100 percent there. I'm like, well, this summer I didn't get as much done as I wanted to, but next summer I'm going to get four times as much done yeah. as I tried to. <laughs> and it's like, what? What? Why? Like I yeah. should be like I should be adjusting. Like if we were salespeople, we would like we sold less than we thought we were going to, so we would like adjust our projection for the next year to be like. Maybe a little bit more than what we did this year, but not like more than what we didn't do, <laughs> you know. But that's what as creatives we do that all the time. I think it's like, oh, I didn't have time to do all of that, but tomorrow yeah. I'm gonna do five times more than that, and I'm gonna be more tired because today I like like really ran myself down or something, you know. Than I was today. Yeah. Okay. So um, why don't we uh, why don't we jump into our newsletter this week? Well, sticking to the topic of creativity, um, I was on. <laughs> Why do we? I feel like I have to do another story time. I'll make this one brief, but <laughs> basically, I'm looking into getting a therapist. So I was talking to Alex about like just life things, and she was like, "Oh, check out psychology.com, like just as a way of finding something." And then, so I logged on there, and like, long story short, I don't have a therapist yet. I'm working on it. But I did see this article by this woman, and I really don't know much else about her, but I really liked this article. So here we are. Basically, her point is that creativity isn't just about making art. She suggests that perhaps cooking, gardening, keeping a journal, crafts, all of these are creative tasks. So the reason I really like this is because um, I think it – just alleviates like so much of the pressure and also maybe would make you more likely to like want to do the stuff that's a little more um, like that has more teeth perhaps. Mm. Um, if you think of all these other things as creative acts, which I think they can be, and then framing them as such, I think can be kind of like, it makes life more enjoyable to me. Like if I'm like, I'm gonna have some fruit and I just take like two minutes and display it in a nice way i swear to god it changes it no i feel that so i just like the i like the framing framing it as creative and then i also think it like breaks down the wall that people have of like well i'm not i can't sing i can't draw my dad has always been like he likes to say you will eventually but just this idea that humans are creative and that hopefully they could feel like creativity is more approachable if it's in things that are not necessarily like releasing an album <laughs> or like painting a wall-sized gallery worthy piece of art <laughs> i don't know Sorry. No, i'm losing I feel it that, like um especially with like the cooking thing like th i think chefs are like very creative i don't know if you've heard of liz Wright, but she like she does like the whole singing um her whole thing is like blues and greens so like she sings and she also like owns a restaurant because that's like also something that stretches her creative side that's like not music 
Okay, well, I have heard of her actually. She's. I didn't well, know she cooks though. She has like a whole restaurant. We should go. What? Anyways, is it in New York? I think so. Oh, let's go. Um, but I feel that especially in cooking, like especially, I've seen my dad. My dad cannot sing or dance or draw or keep a beat like anything in the arts that's that. deemed creative but he's like one of the best cooks like i've ever met even though he doesn't call himself one he'll look in the refrigerator and they'll to me there's nothing i'm like what am i gonna make with like mayonnaise and rice and then he's like here's this whole concoction that i made and that i was like dad you're a very creative human like just that's to cool. be able to like look in the refrigerator in the pantry and put things together and be like yeah here's a meal that i just made up in my mind that's what it is, just making things up in your mind. Right, Charlie? Yeah, Maddie always, she calls it mind soup. If she like makes up soup that is not in a recipe. And I'm like, I think maybe we should come up with a different title for that because it kind of sounds like a weird Halloween <laughs> thing. Um, I love that. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, like part of the thing that's in the article from, from this, like one of the quotes is, creativity requires risk-taking. It asks us to surrender, to lose control, to trust. I think like when... What's different about like when I'm feeling creative outside of music that I think one of the things that's different is this idea of control. Like I feel like if it's something I've spent less time cultivating skill or something in that I have less control in it. Um, but And I think actually that's the nice thing about that stuff for me where it just kind of feels like they're kind of – I'm allowed to have more happy accidents or something, um, which in music it's kind of like – accidents are kind of bad or something. <laughs> like I'm trying to avoid accidents <laughs> and I, and it would be nice to not maybe so much. Cause I think there's a lot of cool, obviously there's all this cool random stuff that happens, you know? Um, and to me that happens more when I'm like playing an instrument I don't know as well. Like for the songwriting club this week, like I was playing guitar, which I don't really play very much. And so it, it was yeah. like, there was weird things happening. And I was like, Oh, that's kind of interesting. Like I played this chord and I was like, I don't know what the hell that is. And I had to like, I, I kind of after the fact went and figured it out. But for a long time, I didn't even kind of try to figure it out. I was just like, I like the, how that sounds. I love that. Um, and it happens too when I'm recording sometimes. Like I'll be messing with things and like something will just, it's actually happened with like a big band chart I wrote in undergrad where like something got messed up in finale and like a whole section got moved by like three beats but then it like ended up being cool. Like it was like all of a sudden uh, all this stuff was like hitting like in weird syncopation stuff. And I was like, oh my God, I'm a genius. Because Finale <laughs> just like had like a little spasm or something. And now yes. It's like, Love and that. now I made a new thing. Um, those like accidents or something seem, seem less common uh, as we're trying to kind of iron them out or something of our, of our process. And it's like, oh no, we should kind of keep some of those. Um, if, if we can, or a lot of those, or, or try to trick our, trick ourselves into making those happy mistakes or something more often. Yeah. I don't know. That's kind of part of what I got from this. I totally, yeah, I totally agree with what both of you are saying um, as well. I don't know if that makes it sense. It reminds me of something came up last night. I was talking to someone, but we were talking about life and ignorance is bliss, mm. but maybe that's true in this too. Cause I'm sure a chef, you like the deeper you get into something the more you know yeah sometimes the less it's like so magic it can be harder yeah it's like magic you see the bunny come out of the hat and then when you actually know how to do the trick it's no longer oh it just appears you like you know yeah. everything and like when you see when you go and you watch another magician it's not as <gasps> yeah yeah because you know exactly what they did it's interesting you know yeah but i think other things don't like that same element of surprise, I think can appear anywhere, like even in math. Yeah, probably. I mean, what do I know? And uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure I surprised <laughs> my math teachers kidding. a lot by, <laughs> by my yeah. Yeah. Test. They're like, oh my, <laughs> that's, God. that is surprising. <laughs> yeah. I'm the like, process. I'm just did... as surprised. I don't know how I got there, <laughs> but I, that's, this is where we are now. It's oh called gosh. creativity, my friend. <laughs> let, me yeah. tell you, let me tell you about I it. I do. I am this person though. I say I'm not creative. I you do say, say you're that. not creative? Yeah. Oh my god. No, no, but I, because I, um, 
people sometimes you know how some people ask you to come up with like an idea on the spot and you're yeah. like mm. that does not mean you're not but i'm not i know though. i know but like okay. this ha- this has restructured we I mean, not restructured reframed my thinking mm. on uh creativity because i think like especially outside of music i'm more willing to make take risks which is a part of that too and um like i really want a cow chair in my room like i really want a cow chair but it does not match anything but i'm getting a cow chair and it's going to be a statement and i think that's that's creative and creative yeah so i'm like that this definitely like helped reframe what i meant but to myself when i'm not when i said i'm not creative it just mean i I wasn't taking risks i guess but risk taking is you can or just taking your time Mm -hmm. yeah anyways (laughs) this made me think of what a teacher said this a math teacher said this to me it was my stats teacher i think i was not good at math but basically like he said the reason to keep taking math like the reason to take calculus per se i never took calculus would be that your brain, it asks your brain to move in pathways it hasn't before. So that's maybe like, that encourages me too. Like, I don't cook really, I can't say that I do, but I wanna try just so my brain can like do it. And then like, yeah, just life things of like, you set up like our entire apartment. I think that's creative. Seriously. My mother. (laughs) And yes. And, And I. You know, that can be creative. Yeah, like just creation, you know, creation is, yeah. I think we think of this like, um, this like artistic genius as part of like creativity, <laughs> but like a lot of times even that is kind of a false, like a false narrative or something, like a, talking about the, <laughs> this unreliable narrative, narrator or something, but it's like, oh, Steve Jobs is a genius, you know, he invented the iMac or something, and it's like, no, he <laughs> didn't. Also, like... They stole all those ideas. Like everything that's part of Apple has been basically, I mean, don't sue me, Apple. Uh, please <laughs> like and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. But um, but everything Apple basically has ever done, I mean, this is kind of their MO. It's like they're stolen ideas. You know, they're, they're maybe done better than other people have done them, but they're stolen ideas. But like we think of like of these people like uh, as geniuses, you know, and yeah. Right. Um, you know, even like Miles Davis or whatever, you know, like artistic genius. And it's like, well, you know, there pretty much every idea Miles Davis has had, you can find someone else doing it sooner or in similar combinations and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, I think we have a, we kind of lie to ourselves about this stuff where it's like, if you make something, it's, you're creative, I think. And I think it can mm. be as simple as that. Maybe two people get caught up in like wanting to or like conflating the terms creative, creativity and innovation. Mm. Because I think like you can be a creative person and then innovate, which is cool. But like, I feel like it's unrealistic to expect yourself to innovate every single time you create something. That that's that's which maybe because people like put all of these creative geniuses on these like pedestal things. They're like, well, they're innovators. So everything they do is innovation (laughs) when really maybe, you know what I mean? Like if you look at it, like you're saying, like they're standing on the shoulders of like so many people. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times it's just like combining ideas or something and like, and like maybe they, maybe they were the first one to think about combining those ideas, but a lot of times they're not even that, you know, it just is, that's where like all the luck of that stuff comes in of success, you know, but um, yeah. But yeah, if you're, yeah, if we're comparing ourselves to f- fake news or something, it's like, <laughs> or we're, you know, if we're comparing ourselves to like false idols, then it's like, well, then we might not feel like we're that. It's funny that you that that you would say that you don't feel creative, Alexandria, because I think you would probably make what? a lot of the people that have played with you and a lot of people that have been around you kind of upset if you said that. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> Offended. They, offended. They would be offended. I yeah, I think. Even just but, listening to you improvise. Listening, to, Amy was singing today. Just no, like no. in the bedroom, just like cut that like, out. Dang the ideas. Cut this part anyways. out. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please. Okay, before before we upset everybody in the room, let's um <laughs> let's move on to our next A. We had uh, David Geffen Hall. Yeah. So David Geffen Hall got revamped revamped again 
<laughs> re revamped. Wait, re re revamped. <laughs> Three re's there. Um, but uh, and anyways, the David Geffen Hall is where we have the New York Philharmonic, and this hall was notorious for having like acoustic issues woes and so they were like we're gonna put 550 million dollars into this and have it um renovated <laughs> and they did it and in years prior they have had it with this like really expensive black tie gala vibe and this year like we're gonna be different so <laughs> they opened with um jazz trumpet player and composer Etienne Charles, who's from Trinidad, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. um, doing a commission work called San Juan, San Juan Hill, which is the neighborhood that Lincoln Center <laughs> um, <laughs> gentrified. Like gentrified, um, yeah. They, um, <laughs> With $550 yeah, like million. They, dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Lincoln Center, the the area that Lincoln Center now takes up used to be San Juan Hill, which is um, it was a a neighborhood that held like Afro diasporic cultures. So whether it be like from like actual uh, continent of Africa or like the Caribbean or um, Black American experiences, so that was like that neighborhood. Um, but I think it was mainly like Afro Caribbean which is why they got uh, Atyon to do it. Um, which I, I think that's amazing that Lincoln Center was like, oh yeah, we're, we definitely like ripped up this neighborhood, but I guess we can paint, we can get people to talk about it and talk about its influences by recognizing the history that was there. Um, and I think uh, the, the CAO, the CAO, the CEO, um, Deborah Board, who left actually, and then she came back. Oh, I didn't know that. She said, um, we we're thinking when they built this new place, they said, she said, we are thinking of the totality of the artistic and human and social statement. Mm. Um, so I think this is like a new chapter for Lincoln Center to be um, culturally aware. And to I think for this hall, they want it to be more um, accessible to the public, meaning that San Juan Hill, I don't think, I think it was pay what you want. So I love when as things when are like you, that. So that every, anybody could participate in um, going to the hall. And I think that's an amazing way to have art to be accessible to someone who you usually won't see going to David Giffen Hall. Yeah. Um, and have them to and paying tribute to um, the neighborhood that it once was. I don't know. I liked that idea that they're aware of the inaccessibility that Lincoln Center can sometimes be and that they are trying to turn a new leaf and have it be, I don't know, more suitable. So I think they're like for the for some months, I think like two or three times a month or something like that, they're having a series where it's open up to the public and I think it's like pay what you want or like five dollars or something like that or completely free. That's super cool. I can't remember. It says the New York Times, so go to the New York Times and read up on it. But um, and that is in our for a Substack thing. Check it out. Cool. Our next our next point is very nerdy. It's about AI. Uh, so this was the headline in Pitchfork. Uh, Will AI lead to new creative frontiers or take the pleasure out of music? Dun, we don't dun, know. Dun. Uh, um, so, you know, basically, just like AI is kind of ramping up and all these other things, I don't know if people have seen like this Dolly thing. Um, I've, I've sent some, I've sent some things, but it's like, if you're on social media, you'll see things where it's like, cat goes to space, like do a painting, an impressionist painting of like a cat in outer space, like eating this. cereal or something like that. And they'll like do a thing or whatever, um, where like AI does this thing. And, and it was a few years ago that people were like, they were having all these like, um, Good Morning America segments where like an art critic or something would try to tell an, a piece of art that was created by an AI versus like a human and like see if they could tell the difference. Um, but now it's kind of just gotten insane, partly because it, these tools have, have started to become accessible to real people. Mm. So um, 
So I've been kind of like I was kind of like putzing around. There's this one that's like Open AI Jukebox is the is the name of it. This is not something that we can kind of like mess around with yet, but it's kind of like um, if you go to this website that's like linked in the article, it's like basically like an academic paper where they're saying like this is the AI that we made. This is kind of how it works. This is like the deal, and they have examples of that like where it's like. There's one where it's like a F- Sinatra song where he's singing about a Christmas hot tub, which is like so up my alley. Oh my like God. I want this whole album <laughs> of like Sinatra singing about hot tubs. Um, or they'll like a- Elvis doing like a, like a made up song or like a Katy Perry thing. And, um, and they have a bunch of examples there where they're like, they basically just plug this info into all this like all these songs recordings and like and like the parameters into this ai and it will like spit out a song oh um, my gosh oh. and there's a couple of different inter- interesting parts to this and, and with lyrics and all that kind of stuff there's a couple of interesting parts of this they do say there is a section ca- under limitations where um, they kind of talk about kind of like what the vibe is a little bit which i thought was interesting um uh, they say, while jukebox represents a step forward in musical quality, coherence, length of audio sample, and ability to condition on artists, genre, and lyrics, there is a significant gap between these generations and human-created music. Thank God. Um, yeah. Don't get me started. Say, I hate yeah, this. <laughs> but it's crazy. So what – but I think – what's funny is this is at the bottom of this whole thing. So it's like it starts off and it feels kind of like very scary in a way, I think, or kind of – we put a poll up on Instagram and it was just kind of like, do you think this is scary or do you think this is cool? I actually kind of am more on the side of, I think this is cool um, just because I think it's just like another Charlie. tool. I think people were freaking out about this in the oh. same way that people were freaking out about synthesizers. Or like Photoshop or perhaps. Or Photoshop, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's more, I think like deep fakes and stuff are much more problematic than this um, to me. Deep what? Deep fakes. Deep fakes, yeah. Do you know about deep fakes? No. So deep fakes are basically like you can put a fi- you can put someone's face on on someone else, mm-hmm. and so um, the I <laughs> caution you against googling this because it is prob is deeply problematic. Um, but anyways, <laughs> at, in in a way, that's what this is. That's what these are kind of musically is like these are like deep fakes with music. But but. This is the other thing about this. So it says it takes approximately nine hours to fully render one minute of audio through their models. Are you serious? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, so, this is a huge problem though. Now they can now people can say things that they didn't say. Yeah, I was gonna say, is it plagiarism yeah. if they take it from the AI? Because it's it's not intellectual property technically. I mean it's an artificial, but it's artificial, so like is it? I just think that is a very slippery slope. I am not on board. <laughs> My friend Richard was many, trying many... to talk me down. I was like, no. <laughs> okay, let me relax. Let me, let me talk you down. It takes nine okay, hours to make one minute of it, and it's not very good. It's like, um, you should go listen to the samples because it's like okay. it's kind of funny and it's smushy. Like the there's the one the Sinatra thing about <laughs> the Sinatra thing where he's singing about hot tubs. He's like, "What about the Christmas time? <laughs> I'm gonna go in the hot tub." <laughs> and like it kind of sounds like Sinatra, you know? It's like, "Hey, ba da da da." Like it's got it's got like some Sinatra vibes to it, but it's not good. And that's the okay. other thing that they say about this. This is kind of in the limitation section where they're like, "You know, this is not good." It's not good yet, you know, but it's like, Mm -hmm. and it takes forever to do and with like a basically kind of a supercomputer to do. But, you know, um, there's a lot of things our phones do right now that like only supercomputers could do like 15 years ago. So, uh, so obviously this is going to move pretty fast. I, I almost kind of think. Why, why do we need this? Why do we need Frank Sinatra singing about? I mean, but why do we need like an artificial intelligence? In you know what I'm trying to say? Why? Yeah. Why? What is the purpose? Like, so we don't have to pay humans to write songs? I was even offended by this. I saw an album that was like, art, like artists that were passed away, like jazz. I forget who they were, but jazz legends with younger artists or something. Yeah. Not like the Natalie Cole, Nat King Cole thing. That's different because they're related. Yeah. I think like that's not my business. I was so offended though. I was like, how dare they 
take the audio of someone who has passed away. I don't know. I just think it's like a weird line. There's like a very, very weird line. Sorry. Sure. There's a very like a weird, weird line. line. There's so much yeah. a weird line that there's an alarm going off. That I, I think Yes. <laughs> sorry. Okay, well I ha I have a very mixed I have very mixed record on these sort of things like in terms of I'm very unpredictable with my opinions about this because I am someone I don't like saying stuff like that, but I hate medleys. Say like it. I think medleys are lame. Oh. And so <laughs> And so, like, of course, I don't like the idea of like people re-recording themselves, like singing a random duet with someone who's dead. Like, I think that's horrible. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I that's was even not... annoyed. I honestly, I was even annoyed by this. Is how big of an old man I am about some of this stuff. I was annoyed by the Lady Gaga Tony Bennett stuff. Uh, really? I, yeah, because I was just kind of like, because well, there's a documentary where that like it's his last concert at like Radio City Music Hall mm -hmm. or something. And they literally like wheel him out. He doesn't know where he is. Like he doesn't oh know who anybody is. Like he doesn't know who Lady Gaga is. Like he's just like, oh hi. And they walk <laughs> him out on stage and he just is like, oh my God, I'm back on I'm back on tour or something. He's like, hey everybody. And he's like doing his thing. And like they wheel then they like take him off stage and he's like, uh, who are you? You know, and it's just like he goes on stage and he likes and it's kind of it was kind of beautiful in a way because he goes on stage and he snaps into like his old thing, totally. he's like super stoked, but he's in his dressing room. And he's like, what is going on? You know, like he's, Yikes. he doesn't know what's happening. And then like Lady Gaga is there like, ba -da 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 -da, and like dancing next to him <laughs> yeah. and stuff. And I'm just kind of like, I wasn't keen on it at first either. Super weird. Yeah. Um, And like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think everyone's entitled to their opinion about that, I think, but I didn't feel great about it. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think this is the same kind of thing. I think, so the benefit of this is you could say, um okay it's amy's birthday tomorrow i want to have i want to program like <laughs> whoever you know like i want to i want to program ella fitzgerald singing happy birthday to amy and like say her name and then i want her to talk i want her to sing about uh the the um the Mo or sorry, I'm like having a stroke. The, uh, no, the I'm, cow. I, love this. I want I want her to sing about the. I want to sing about Alexandria's cow chair. You know what I mean? And like do that kind of thing. And it's like, oh, isn't that fun and cool or something? Or like, isn't that funny? Mm. I don't like. It's just like the Dolly thing. Like, I don't think. I think we're gonna have to figure this out. I don't know that there's value of this kind of stuff that isn't made by real people. I think it's just kind of like an interesting kind of funny thing, but I don't know that it will have value. Like, I don't know that anyone would buy it. I don't know that people would like. But I feel like there's two parts of this. One is like, you know how in virtual reality, you know, it's not real because for instance, if a shark comes near you, it's not actually going to bite your head off. Right. Like, I feel like if the person is dead, then you know it's not real. But if the person is alive and the voice gets, like, good or something, that could be a huge problem. And then in the other thing, who's to say people aren't just going to start using this instead of hiring real musicians, which happened with synthesizers anyways? Is that what or you were MIDI, saying? Like, or, or MIDI. Or MIDI, yeah. You know, MIDI. Like I, um, yeah. Who's to yeah. say they won't do that? No, they absolutely will yeah. do that. I mean – what we've learned about technology and the internet is that like everything is used for all of its purposes like good and evil like yeah. all the time constantly you know it's like then oh why forums... would this person want to create this like it takes so much work to create like an ai to just do what people do so well already and they're efficient like humans are there are some humans who can write a song in literally <coughs> less than nine hours so why we got to wait nine hours for this AI to make this song that humans are already good at? That's why I'm frustrated. Like who sat down and was like, oh yeah, like humans are inefficient at writing songs since when? Yeah. Well, okay. So it's the people who did this specifically <laughs> are at openai.com and the jukebox project. And I, I don't think you're wrong, but they do say, they do say why they did this. So they say okay. auto automatic music generation dates back to more than half a century. A prominent approach is to generate music symbolically in the form of a piano roll, 
which specifies the timing, pitch velocity, and instrument of each note to be played. This has led to impressive results like Bach chorales, blah, blah, blah. Um, but symbolic generators have limitations. They cannot capture human voices or many more of the more subtle timbres, dynamics, and expressivity that are essential to music. A different approach is to model music directly as raw audio. Um, and basically, they say, we chose to work on music because we want to continue to push the boundaries of generative models. Our previous work on MusicNet explored synthesized music-based with a large amount of MIDI data. Um, but basically, they said they wanted to do this because it's really hard. And so they're trying to, like, push the computer or, like, push this kind of, like, form of AI. Um, and like people, people someone's like, gonna accidentally make a robot that is going to destroy humanity <laughs> i'm calling I, it i'm like they want to push technology and push Why? it in a, push it not in music <laughs> alexandria's like get a different Just, house you're like, yeah get go, off my move lawn out. yeah <laughs> alexandria <laughs> do not <laughs> not do in my not, backyard I have worked with yeah. you. not in music <laughs> i Just agree with go you. somewhere else music is so fundamentally human yeah and I, I understand synthesizers. Synthesizers have had like a great, like, you know, whatever. But humans, you know, in order to get the right sound for something, like people are making those different sounds, they're adding, it's like adding to whatever's happening while someone is bopping outside. <laughs> I can't hear it, it's okay. Okay, great, but. Uh, but it, what if you, I mean, like there are people like, um, there are people that are using computers to do this kind of stuff where they're like playing along with it or like improvising along with the computer and the computer is like reacting. I mean, like there's stuff like that that's happening too that has a human element. I mean, um, anyways, yes, this is scary. <laughs> Charlie's looking at our faces. Charlie, like, that's like that thing that you get, you know, when you log into your Bank of America, they're like, ooh, talk to, I forgot her name. And I'm just like, oh, I don't, okay. Or like when you like yeah. the fact oh, that did we, did we talk about this? Didn't we what? talk about this? Oh no. Oh, I was talking about this with my friend Hannah. Ad <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> she's, she's like super cool. She's like, she just graduated from MIT and she's talking about technology having this more human element. So like those, um, like, so she did this whole trial where it was like people who have these type of conditions where they, they can't stay in one position for too long or else they get sores or something. So she created this like human element where like she'll text them, hey, time to move. And then they have to send something back like a picture. And then like she responded back like with the like, oh, great, blah, blah, blah. Um, and people were more likely to um, move or whatever if they had this more human element. Same thing with like JetBlue is doing it. They're like, um, instead of you having to talk to the computer like, on JetBlue in the app, they now have it to where JetBlue is in your iMessages and you're messaging with a person They're and it seems like real. Um, like, so it's like, I forget what it's called. You're, it's okay, like with, you're okay with that though? I, th yeah, that's I think like it's weird. Mission. I'm not okay with that. <laughs> I'm not okay. No, I'm all that to say I'm not okay with that. They're just trying to mimic humans the in, in the entire time. Some it's okay if it's like used for good, which she was doing. She's like, I'm using this so that people will not get sores. And then this person's using it. Can I push put more technology in music? Can I push more humans out? Please stop pushing us out. Yeah. <laughs> well, sure. Okay. No, I hear what you're saying. Sorry, the I'm being I'm being um facetious. No, no, no. No, it's good. No, I think this is a great conversation to have because well, here's this other thing. In the future, do there need to be musicians? And I know your answer is gonna be yes, because I... we are musicians. <laughs> Right, what but check this out. Check this out, Charlie. No, check the no. Just <laughs> let me finish. <laughs> You're this, I'm out. not necessarily okay. arguing. I'm not saying that this is what I think or feel. Or, no, I love when I love this type of argument. But um, so uh, people who drive trucks for a living, right? Like semi drivers, very upset about autonomous trucks. Right. However, it's very easy for me as someone who does not drive a truck and who is kind of like not always feeling great about semis driving on the highway next to me and being kind of like sometimes kind of crazy or them driving for long hours or whatever. And not also, also not being stoked about like the current state of autonomous vehicles or something like that. But mm -hmm. I can imagine a time in my lifetime where 
we don't really need truck drivers, you know, where there's like mm. something that's happening that is moving the stuff around and we don't need someone to sit in the same chair for eight hours a day to kind of like get that where it needs to go. Maybe that takes a lot of different forms, but I could imagine a time where we don't need that. Could we imagine a time, it's not really a great question for us, but like could we imagine a time where we don't need musicians, where there's new music being created? I mean, we're at this point now where it's like I could not listen to as much music as been is been recorded. I could no single person yeah. could listen to like a small, tiny, tiny fraction of all the music in the world. So it's like that's a part of it where it's like, do we need new music? And it's like, well, yes, we do because we need uh, we want to express new ideas and all that kind of stuff. But it's like if you could just plug the new ideas into a an a program that would take things and smush it around in ways that were fun i don't know it's i think it's I think hard to this imagine literally leads to the question of what is the meaning of life to people because i know for a fact i know people who don't care about music who you know what i mean but yeah. what you were saying one day in the car is like for that type of person if you took away all music would they notice and i think the answer is probably yeah, yeah. i think i think they would notice that's where my brain goes. But but for some people, like my dad, like my dad, for instance, which is like, um, anytime I bring up my dad, you know, this is about to be a crazy example. This is not, <laughs> um, this is not like your dad, Amy, or your dad, Alexandria. This is a, di this is a different animal. But um, <laughs> this is Jeff Christensen. Jeff. But, um, but like, if I said, okay, dad, they're not making any new music. Like, they're just, we just have what we have now. I think he'd be like, okay, I don't care. Like, that's fine. Oh I just want to listen to, like, Neil Young and, like, weird, like, old, um, like, folk music or something, you know, from the... But he's listening to Neil Young, though. So he yeah. does have some someone or, like, an artist that was influential. No, he loves... So you're he saying... He loves music. He loves music. But if I said, we're not making right. it anymore, I think he'd be like, that's okay. It's kind of like, then, there's no so new episodes of Friends. You can just watch the... The ones there you, already you are. You can just watch the ones there are. And, Slash, and I think you're I'll, saying, it like if if the AI was making it, like the people might find meaning in that or something, or like I don't know. I, this is kind of unrelated cool thing, to the AI. The cool thing that, that would it would be is like the AI, like Elf put out a new record that was AI generated. <laughs> that would that's the only that's the only thing I could, could see that's cool. Or yeah, Elvis I mean, put out I, a new record. Yeah, I think AI there'll generated. be interesting. I think there will be interesting applications to this, and I will say too that like just creating the program is an act of creativity. Like that's a making of a thing. Uh, yeah, let's just not use it. Let's put it in a museum. <laughs> <laughs> and like creating so... the atom bomb was also a, an act of creativity, and uh, and look where we are now. And look where we are now. We're gonna live but, forever. But that's like I feel like. <laughs> yeah, maybe we just leave it at that. <laughs> Um, no, much more to say about this, but I think yeah. I think I'm I'm purposely trying to open a can of worms here, or just yeah. kind of like get I like it about though it. because it tries it, it makes me like really think about what I think. Yeah, that's one thing I'm trying to do more of is like if I'm gonna have a stance, I want to like have actually thought through what the other perspectives are. So I I like it, but I still I think I still hate this. <laughs> that's yeah. fair uh let's move on to new music speaking of <laughs> this is non <laughs> this is non ai music. created music yes um, uh who wants to go first uh avery chapman go first yeah yeah this is um man i love avery chapman so much <laughs> she is just a beautiful songwriter she's very um i just find her songs like i don't even know if thoughtful is the right word but but just like a song that makes you go, huh? Like, I, this is cool. Um, so she has a new album coming out. She released a song, Teresa, um, already. And I thought this was cool. Like, I want to do more of this. She inspires me because so many of my songs are like, this happened to me. And then, uh, and like, I'm always like, it's not about me. But it usually <laughs> is about me. And this was, she took inspiration from, a story, I'm gonna get it wrong. You should check out her Instagram, but basically she took inspiration from a from a story that's not about her um, and then wrote about it, which I think is really cool. And she, her album is coming out on the 21st of October. It's called Did You Know? Um, and she has like a lot of music already out. Her voice is amazing. She's a great arranger, 
really good human. She's just like very present everywhere she goes. That's so Whenever nice. I see her in her life, she's there. That's where she is. And I think that's an admirable quality. It's something I've learned from her is to try to be <laughs> present. And her songwriting is dope. So check out Avery Chapman. Yeah. That's cool. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll try to do like an interview or something with her. I want to. I've been like. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be yeah. really cool. Uh, cool. Nice. Alex, what, what were you listening to? There's a new, uh, vastly new different Smith vibes. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Will Smith has a new like pop punk Ooh. rock type thing going on. And I, I honestly enjoyed her last album. Um, and so this is like kind of a continuation of that um, same vibe, but just like extra her going out of the box. And um, I, I deeply appreciate Willow um, because if you just check out our Instagram, you can just tell how many influences that she has. Like this is a record where I listened to it and I was like, oh yeah, she's definitely listened to like Minnie Ripperton, you know, and this like pop punk album. Um, Cause she just has like the tendencies like of some, you know, some of those tendencies, but then also she's like screaming. She does some screamo stuff in there too. And I'm just like, wow, she's so versatile. And like, I hope that she goes down in the books, not as like Will Smith's daughter, but like as Will Smith, the artist who's like probably like a vocal monster that it just doesn't, the world's not ready for yet. Mm. I don't think they still view her as like what, with my hair back and forth but she's not that anymore she's like becoming monstrous at what she's able to do with her instrument yeah yeah i listened to a little bit of this and it was a little intense for me but yeah it's, uh, but it's, <laughs> it's cool. intense it's dark <laughs> it's cool i saw a video of her playing or something and i was like oh okay that's not that was not initially what i was expecting or something because i think she you know she just is like it was very aggressive like everything like visually <laughs> everything was like very aggressive it but it's cool um, my uh, thing I listed on our new music this week was a new album from Bjork, and I think it's pronounced Fasor Fasora, but I mm -hmm. don't. When it comes to Bjork, it's hard to know because it's all very Icelandic <laughs> vibes. And this apparently is her Mushroom album. It's her tenth album, and uh, yeah, she said oh this is my Mushroom album. But I um, but yeah, it's it's like more. It is definitely like more organic than some of the other things that have come out more recently. I think in in a way that there's this like there's more acoustic kind of more classical instruments on it. So there's like woodwinds and mm. strings and all that kind of stuff. So it's Ooh. cool. I mean, I think like Bjork is so f weird that it's like it's a hard <laughs> it's a hard sell for me every time. <laughs> like I don't mean to <laughs> not recommend. I don't mean to unrecommend this, but. Um, but it's cool. There's some like there's some really cool stuff on it. But it's getting it's kind of like her, you know. She's kind of in the. In, she's always been a little avant-garde, but it's just kind of like she's basically like a like an avant-garde like contemporary classical composer. Mm -hmm. She's like the, she's kind of like Meredith Monk. I think like I think maybe in like a hundred years she's going to be in that zone and not wow. like in the, I, you know, not not maybe linked up with like. Coldplay or something or you know or whatever <laughs> yeah, else was yeah. um you know or like the whatever those 90 things are you know I think yeah. um you know even like Radiohead or something that was like around that same time at least for me it's like I you know they're they're so much poppier than Bjork it's kind of crazy it's funny even though she she yeah. started off and it, it felt very like these are like pop radio hit songs but but anyways this album is cool and if, if you if you like Bjork and you kind of um uh, yeah, and if if you want to hear more, when you want to hear more, it's been getting really good reviews and stuff. I think everybody's like, "Yay, yeah. more Bjork!" It's been five years since she's had an album, so wow. So it's been a, a while, but uh, yeah, she's definitely like <laughs> talk about creative. She's like very <laughs> yeah. creative. Um, yeah, innovative. And it's like crazy, you know. It's just like it's um, it's it's stuff that I don't know that we're all ready for yet. Um, but anyways, that those are, those are some cool things to check out. There's like there's a lot of things hitting right now that I think are yeah. also kind of under the radar. Like there were things that we were talking about over the summer, the singles that are coming out as full albums now. Like the full albums are yeah. coming out. Like that Keith Jarrett album that we had talked about. Oh yeah. A few weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, or two, or something, where uh, there was like some new singles were coming out, and that that album is out now. Uh, or it was out maybe a few weeks ago, and that's really cool. There's a bunch of stuff like that that's like kind of coming out now. I just saw Nora Jones is like her 
Christmas, her new Christmas album is coming out like next week or something. <laughs> it's oh, like, wow. <laughs> she's like, I know it's weird. It's not even Halloween yet, but like, this is how the cycle, this is how the release cycle goes in the music yeah, biz. And it's like, like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Recording yeah. it in like July. <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah it's or so something. brutal. I was thinking about that. So we used to turn the A up, the AC up all the way or something. Um, <laughs> uh, our extra credit this week was um, a very silly thing. Do you do you guys even know like Smash Mouth? Do you know Smash yeah. Mouth at all? Or like okay, I, I that was like a thing we played in Pep Pep Pan when I was in high school, and <laughs> like we all made fun of it. But like, there's this funny poster that someone posted on Twitter that was like, um, it's in it's from this account. Uh, I think I've told you about the like K or like. Uh, what is it? It's like it's something like uh, like uh, music notation that goes hard or something or like chaotic like yes, yeah. aggressive have, yeah. music notation. This is a very similar account. This one's called Musical Instruments with Chaotic Auras. Um, these oh are basically <laughs> this is like a third of what I follow on Twitter is like things like this. Um, but this one is like a poster that said "Basis Wanted for Corn and Smash Mouth Cover Band." We are a cover band that strictly plays Corn and Smash Mouth songs, and we are looking for a bassist. Requirements: <laughs> positive mental attitude. Celebrates Corn and Smash Mouth's entire catalog. We don't just play Freak on a Leash and All Star, but like obviously we play those two. Laugh my L M A O. Uh, someone who owns a bass. If you know how to play it, that's a bonus. Not afraid to live life. <laughs> And no narcs. <laughs> it's part of this poster. Oh my I think it's gosh. so funny. If you only like oh corn or if you only like Smash Mouth, this is not the band for you. Um, oh my so goodness. This is this poster goes hard. I do respect them like exactly knowing what they're looking for. Um <laughs> I realize the only reason I know Smash Mouth is literally all star. That's Shane. it. Hey yeah. now, here. That's and is awesome. it like this band does Shrek not just play too? that song? The other big hit, the other big Smash yeah. Mouth hit was um, "Might as Well Be Walking on the Sun," which you probably don't know. It's like know "Might it. as Well Be Walking on the Sun." That that's like my childhood. That song. Ooh, I love out, it. Like, late nineties thing. That's it's our childhood too. Good. It's not very good. Oh, really? Yeah. Like your childhood, like when you were one. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, it was well, in anyways, Shrek. Oh yeah, it was Charlie's like that's not the same. That's not the same. Um, <laughs> I had something I wanted to say about Shrek, but now I forgot it. Okay, so uh, Amy, do you want to read us out? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, oh, are we going to do that or not? Sorry. Oh, oh yeah, we had. Oh, a, yeah, we had. We had th th thank you, everybody, for leaving reviews and stuff. We had a. Um, I think we had a kind of a semi review, right, Alex? Yeah. On, on Instagram. It's or something. my. Uh, yeah, my, my friend Megan texted um, about the newsletter about uh, Amy's section talking about creativity. And she said she loves this part of the article, uh, made her feel less pressure about being creative, but also gave good examples of how one can insert uh, needed creativity into her life when she can't be deliberate, deliberate about finishing a project. Mm. Which I think that was great. I'm glad it's reaching everybody. Yay. So we've also gotten some more comments from our friends like, oh, I listened to this, or like my grandparents wanted me to send them the links. So yeah. hopefully. Leave cool. comments. Yeah. We like reading them. We do. Yeah, leave comments. That's that's like really cool. Yeah, we um, love you want to read us out, Amy? Yes, I do. Thank you for listening, everyone, and supporting for a music. Remember to like and subscribe. And just a note, if you leave a review on Apple Podcasts, it helps us out a lot. We like reading them, but it also helps us out <laughs> a lot. Um, and we'd love to highlight your comments on next week's show. For more, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at 4A Music. Check out that TikTok, guys. Um, and subscribe to our <laughs> newsletter at 4amusic.substack.com and check out our website at 4amusic.com and buy our merch, which I'm wearing. Nice. Merch, 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 merch. What's our, what's our uh, saying for the week, Alex? Uh, don't cry over spilt milk. Rihanna. <laughs> Rihanna has entered the chat. <laughs> Rihanna. Okay, we think you're super. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 You never know. That Alex can be silly. the new saying. You never know. <laughs>
You never know. John Legend. John Legend. Next week. Right next week. <laughs> what if I just did the whole thing like this? <laughs> <laughs>